Hey. Oh, hey. I got this ammo that's gonna knock your boots off. Wow. Wow. Nice, huh? These are incredible. Where are they from? Here, I'll give you a hint. Wait, I don't get it. Look again. Okay. I don't understand. Are you, come on, look again. All right. Oh, there's the target. Good day folks, welcome back to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. So I have a very long videos to do list of products that were sent to me to test and showcase. But when these arrived, I could not wait. And I put them straight on top of the list. So ladies and gentlemen, directly from Switzerland, I give you these air gun bullets by Swiss brand SMP. Now the looks of these are to me just awesome. HDR50 ammo doesn't get more bullet looking than this. SMP makes a variety of slugs, mostly made of metal and bullet shaped. Here's a sampler. They sent me four samples to test. Two varieties of bullet shaped slugs. These here are made in aluminum uh, and weigh 2.6 grams, while these here are steel and weigh a lot more, 7.2 grams. These here instead are a little bit more pointy, quite uniquely shaped. Also come in aluminum at 1.8 grams and in steel at 5.2 grams. Now, will their looks match their performance? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Today, I'll be shooting this HDR50 or TR50 11 joules version. And as always, I'll be changing CO2 cartridge before every single test. All right, folks, as always, we'll start with a chrono test in feet per second. I'll be testing all four projectiles. We're starting with the uh, metal or steel bullets. And as always, we have uh, two and a half gallon plastic water jugs that are recycled, refilled with tap water to catch the bullets. All right, up next we have the aluminum or aluminum version, depending where you're from. I just really want to point out how well they fit into the magazine. Just a perfect fit. Tight, just perfect. Up next, folks, we'll be testing the steel version of these more pointy ones. And finally, it's time for the lightest one of them all, the aluminum pointy ones, which are 1.8 grams. For those of you who don't know this gun, uh, this is a paintball marker uh, that Umarex markets as a home defense device. And that is because you insert the CO2 canister inside of the gun and it remains completely sealed until the moment of need when you do indeed need to use it. So you can keep this gun into a drawer or a safe or wherever for long periods of time uh, until the moment of need, at, at which point you uh, pierce the CO2 by pressing hard on this uh, 
on this little uh, piercing valve here and you'll see a in red indicator coming out and that means that the gun is ready to shoot. All right, folks, while you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, I'm going to unwrap this ballistic gel head. Well done and thank you very much. So this is a ballistic gel head that you find easily on Amazon. Very, very affordable. Uh, in fact, I've used this very often, so much so that the brand, the makers, uh, send me this particular one uh, for free, I guess, as a thank you for using them so much. So I thank you guys again uh, for sending me this. All right, so for our ballistic gel head, I'm going to shoot three projectiles of each. As you know, each magazine holds six rounds. So I'm going to shoot three of the pointy uh, steel slugs and three of the bullet shape steel slugs. And then I'll do the same with the aluminum one, three and three. So let's start with the metal projectiles versus the ballistic gel head. All right, folks, time to inspect. So let's see, right here we actually have uh, side by side the uh, the bullet shaped slug versus the more pointy one again these are both the steel heavier version so the pointy slug seems to have traveled exactly two inches while the uh, bullet shaped just around an inch and a half uh, here in the forehead we have a cluster of bullets there are three of them uh, they all seem to have entered just about an inch right here in the upper area all right so let's inspect the lighter weight aluminum version of these uh, projectiles Okay, so it is one big cluster on the chin on the chin area. They did not travel nearly as far as the uh, steel ones. Uh, yeah, they kind of all stayed right here on the surface. Nevertheless, there we go. There's one that maybe entered about half an inch, but uh, yeah, they're all in the less than one inch penetration. So for our hard surface test, we are going to shoot four quarter inch Baltic birch plywood boards, just like this one, um, put in a row. As you see, they're nice and fixed. There's no wiggling, no vibration going on. Uh, so let's see how many, uh, obviously how many our bullets will penetrate. Once again, I've alternated uh, the ammo in each magazine. So we have three pointy and three bullets of the uh, aluminum ones and three pointy and three bullets of the steel ones. folks let's investigate I should have shot the uh, bullet shaped ones first and then the uh, pointy after so the first three shots uh, again should be the bullet shape but let's check out the first board so one two three four five six um, so all all six projectiles did indeed penetrate the first layer oh we have one two three so three projectiles crossed the uh, second layer but none of them 
made it to the th third layer other than this little dent here. Up next, the aluminum version. Alright, our aluminum Swiss bullets. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All six did indeed penetrate the first layer. Definitely weaker. So we have one, two, three bullets stuck between the first and the second layer. On the second layer, we only have some dentings. One, two, three, four, five, five dentings but no hold. But once again, folks, the projectiles are absolutely perfect, ready to be reused, even when shot through plywood. All right, folks, I have some good news for those of you who have been waiting for French brand Tour Sekev to release the XM4 mount for the HDR50. They are finally back out in stock. There's actually a newer version, which I'm waiting for. Uh, it has been sent to me to show you guys, uh, but for today, we'll be using the old version. Uh, this is how you actually apply it onto the gun. And I have attached this bipod here, which works really well with this XM4 mount. Uh, it was kindly sent to me by my friends over at CV Life. While the scope, which is not included, uh, was kindly sent to me by Easy Shoot. Again, as always, all the links down in the description. And our next target, this 1970 yellow Mustang. So guys, ricochet is real. I got hit by one bouncing bullet with a little scratch. That's why safety is always very important. And just a reminder to those of you who want their HDR50 uh, modified but don't want to do it uh, yourself, uh, Caleb over at Airgun Ballistics is in the business of modifying HDR50s for people. Um, I'm just sharing the information. I remain completely out of it and decline any responsibility, but uh, I'll put his uh, link to his uh, YouTube page and 
uh, to his email down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for clicking that like button if you did indeed like this video and for subscribing to the channel. Do let me know what you thought about today's projectiles. I think they are very, very cool. My favorite ones were the, uh, the steel, heavier bullet shape. Uh, I think those are the ones that made the most damage. Uh, but do let me know what you think and I will see you at the next video.